in every country. And, and that includes Russia and China and Iran. Right now, we, we should be putting all the weapons of war aside and sitting down with those guys and say, how are we doing? How are we going to do this? There's much more important things to do. We're going to, this stuff is going to kill us if we don't figure out how to regulate it. And, and leadership needs to look down the road at what, what is the real risk here. And the real risk is that, you know, AI will, will, you know, enslave us for one thing and, you know, and, and then destroy us and do all this other stuff. And how about biological weapons? We're now all working on these biological weapons and we're doing biological weapons from for Ebola and, um, and, you know, dengue fever and, you know, all of these other bad uh, things. And we're making ethnic bioweapons, bioweapons that can only kill Russians, bioweapons that, that the Chinese are making that, you know, are, are, can kill people who don't, who don't have Chinese genes. So all of this is now within reach. We're actively doing it. And we need to stop it. And we can easily, a, a biological weapons treaty is the easiest thing in the world to do. We can verify it, we can enforce it, and everybody wants to agree to it. It only insane people do not want to, want to continue this kind of research. There's no reason to do it. So there are these existential threats to all of humanity now out there, like AI and biological, biological weapons. We need to start, stop fighting each other start competing on economic game fields, playing fields instead of military playing fields, which will be good for all of humanity. And that we need to sit down with each other and negotiate reasonable treaties on how we regulate AI and, and biological weapons. And nobody's talking about this in this political race right now. Nobody's talking about it in a government. They get fixated on these little wars and, you know, and uh, these comic book depictions of good versus evil. And, you know, and we all go, you know, hoorah and, and go off to, and give them the weapons and enrich, you know, the military and industrial complex. But we're, we're on the road to perdition if we don't end this. And some of this requires to have this kind of phone that connects Khrushchev and John F. Kennedy that cuts through all the bureaucracy yeah. to have this communication between heads of state and in the, in the case of AI, perhaps heads of uh, tech companies where you can just pick up the phone and have a conversation. Yes. Because a lot of it, uh, a lot of the existential threats of artificial intelligence, perhaps even bioweapons is unintentional. It's not even uh, strategic exactly. intentional effects. So you have to be transparent and honest about, especially with AI, that people might not know what what's the worst that's going to happen once you release it out into the wild? And you have to have an honest kind of communication about how to do it so that companies are not terrified of regulation, uh, overreach of regulation. And then uh, government is not terrified of tech companies of um, manipulating them in some direct or indirect ways. So like there's a trust that builds versus a distrust. That, that seems, to, so basically that old phone where Khrushchev can call John F.